All right, so welcome, Walt. I'm so glad to have you here. We're going to enjoy some sake. We're going to talk about security. It's going to be a great time. So first we have our, our first sake. So this is non-alcoholic sake, which I didn't know existed until uh, yesterday. And, we need <laughs> and this is from the Nara region in Japan, which uh, apparently is famous for its uh, full-bodied richness. So interesting fun fact. Give it a go. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, this is good. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm quite surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't know what to expect, but no, this is actually I. really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's start off. So you obviously have a long history in security, uh, in particular, kind of pen testing, offensive security. But how, how did you how did you actually get started in security itself? Uh, what got you curious about it? Yeah, I, I think it's a bit like the, the the bit more classical story of like the hacker starting as a child. So I think as a child I was always like busy with computers. Uh, there was something that really interested me, and especially like I had a Wii, and like I was really like focused on trying to do things with the Wii that I normally shouldn't be able to do. Uh, but you need to know, like, at my parents' place, the Wii was, like, three stories up. The computer that we had was, like, down, and we couldn't really go back and forth. So I was, like, constantly, like, the whole afternoon just looking something up, something up on the computer, running up to the Wii, trying it out. It didn't work. Go back down, Googling again. <laughs> so did this way, like, as a child, I could, could keep myself busy forever. So yeah. you were you were fit. I was fit. <laughs> Just going back and forth all the time. Sure. <laughs> uh, how did you get into into actual pen testing and to like understand how you got into security? But how did you go into the offensive side? So yeah, as I was always busy with it as a child, it was like always this idea of I want to become a hacker. And so it's been always like in the back of my mind. And then uh, when I went to university, like at the end, I would have to think like, okay, what do I want to do as a job? And that thought came back to me like from the get-go like i want to become a hacker so i was like really re researching like how do i get into this field how do i do this and uh, this is actually how then i got into contact with ey in the netherlands uh, and they wanted to offer me like uh, a job to, to start and learn there as a professional pen tester so i moved everything i had went to the netherlands lived there for two years and then this is how i got into my first role as a pen tester mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's fascinating it's one of the, the few good stories I've heard from like kind of going into EY. <laughs> not, True. Not, that I, not, that I, not that I want to make any enemies with EY. <laughs> um, so one of the areas why I really wanted to bring you here today is the work that you've been doing and building out uh, a startup uh, in AI pen testing. So conducting offensive pen tests, but using uh, AI, I guess, as, as software. So how does that work? Let's start there. Like how does an AI pen test Mm -hmm. start and happen yeah, an ai pen test actually starts very much the same way as a regular hacker would work so especially now with the the rise of agentic ai you can make like these very separate agents which each specialize in one specific task and each specific task is a task that a regular pen tester would normally do for example map out the whole infrastructure see all the endpoints so that agent has on like their own task and then they, then it would move the task once it's finished to another agent who has done like the next thing for example try to find uh, some injection points for example and this way you have like a whole network of agents who collaborate together in order to mimic the process of a real hacker on an application or an infrastructure so yeah. these agents are kind of like you kind of like have a team yeah. a team of hackers exactly right? and uh, yeah. an agent is and you kind of almost as if it is like with real pen testing you have people that have specializations mm -hmm. yeah so these exactly. agents have specializations in mm -hmm. specific vulnerabilities that they're trying to find, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so one question I have at the moment that I know is going to light up the <laughs> comment section, but we've been talking about these AI style pen tests, kind of producing it as like a software service. Will this replace human pen tests? And it, if so, why or why not? But will it completely replace it? Will it partially replace it? What will happen in the future, you know, I kind of want to say like 10 years, but I think even just five years in AI world is kind of a lifetime. So in five years time, are we still doing human pen tests? Mm -hmm. Good one. Uh, it's, it's one that I've also been thinking about like a lot recently because like everything is going so fast, like where will we be in the next yeah. years? Um, and I think where we will land is that 
pen testing will be almost like 95 to 98% be done through AI because like everything we do as a hacker is a lot of repet repetitive tasks that can be completely automated. Even the more creative tasks can be automated. And for most of the companies that will already be sufficient to get their pen test checkbox marked and have like the full value of a pen test. I think like the, the one or two percent that was still left is for the companies who actually need that a little bit more that have like a low risk appetite. For example, uh, banks, they don't, yeah. they probably will always want that extra little bit more. Uh, so I think for them, humans will still come into the loop, especially to test them more, the more creative bugs that are like tougher to automate with AI. So you mentioned creativity. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask a question about creativity because, you know, at some point, all of the vulnerabilities that we know about, IDOR, cross-site mm -hmm. scripting, SQL injection, they were all invented, well, not invented, but discovered mm -hmm. uh, by humans. So are we going to have blind spots? Like you're training these agentic agents on mm -hmm. specific tasks, but those tasks were all discovered, found by humans. So will we have blind spots? That's a very good question, actually, because like indeed there might be a blind spot somewhere. But if we look at like what the industry right now looks like, almost all different kind of vulnerabilities are already identified. So it will like I don't think AI will invent like new categories of vulnerabilities. But even nowadays with humans, a new category of vulnerability is almost never found again. Now with LLMs, there is a new category, like prompt right. injection, for example, but that's yeah. as the technology progresses. Um, but yeah, so I think the blind spots itself will be like very, very limited just because like humans are very slow on finding new vulnerability types as well. <laughs> How do you train these agentic agents then, mm -hmm. right? What Like what's the process? Do you, you know, like, is it, I, <laughs> I know we're not, but I'm going to say it facetiously. Are we sending out just open AI Look for cross site cross site scripting. <laughs> you know, like how how are we training these models? Mm -hmm. Well, I think like if you say training these models, we need to be a bit careful because we are not in the traditional way of training models uh, of our machine learning models. We will not be providing them like a huge test set. Provide them like uh, ones that we know are already labeled. Like this is good, and then we will have t another test set to say, okay, this is. Like, how does it respond now on what we know? That's not really how we're going to work with uh, LLMs. So what we basically do is with each of these agents, we're going to provide them a specific prompt that says like step by step what they need to check. For example, um, for a path traversal, we can say, okay, if you find this kind of uh, pattern, go and try this, 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 and this. And if you've come across this kind of protection, then you need to try this. So this is like the step-by-step -step approach that the hacker would take in order mm -hmm. to go through it fully. And this needs to be optimized. And like the tough thing is not necessarily creating the prompts. The tough thing about these agentic systems is actually like getting it to be consistent. And in order to be consistent, you need like a huge benchmark to, to see, okay, with this small change in the prompt, am I still getting the same results or not? And that's something that we're seeing as well, like just <laughs> a small change that for us feels like it shouldn't matter, has like a huge effect on the results on the benchmark. So agentic systems is like almost more the benchmark that needs to be like very, very, very good before you like it, that needs to be better than the agentic system itself just to make sure you've got consistent results all the yeah. time yeah i feel like i'm grilling you here because <laughs> i'm really interested and in i'm really i'm like fascinated by this whole system so <laughs> don't take this mm -hmm. uh don't take this negatively but when you when you talk about it through like the step-by-step -step processes that an yeah. attacker would take and we're getting agentic models to do that i understand mm -hmm. that but isn't that the same is kind of traditional dast type scanning or api scanning where we have a pay like a step-by-step -step mm. payload that we discover api endpoints we send a step-by-step -step payload to it mm -hmm. look at their look at the results how is that different than what you're describing with agentic models yeah uh so first of all like the dust and stuff i'm not really big fan of it like in my opinion it, it like every time when i came across it it was so bad at finding things because it just sends something it looks at the response if it has like a certain pattern it, it expects and then 
it just stops there. And while with a Gentix system, what it will do is it will inject something, see how the response, and then based on that, it will make assumptions. Okay, uh, it looks like there's URL encoding active. Maybe I should try this payload. Right. Okay, now I see it reacts in this way. We're already a step closer. Uh, let's alter the payload a little bit more again to see, okay, this comes in. Got it. And this way, like an Agentic system, is a lot more accurate uh, because like it... it doesn't just have like this pattern it actually sees the context of what is going yeah. around it and it just doesn't alert on all these false positives and in my opinion dust is uh, like <laughs> so many false positives i feel like i'm, I feel like I'm bringing up some uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I i get it now and that makes so much sense because it's kind of like saying here's the here's the response or here's the error message mm -hmm. and we can go oh like a, like let's be creative we're not just yep. sending a payload going oh that didn't give us a token or that didn't give us access or, mm -hmm. you know, so move on to the next thing. We yeah. can actually go, oh, it didn't give us a token, but it did give us the syntax error, which may indicate mm -hmm. that actually there's something deeper going on exactly. down below. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially the context. Like that yeah. that's the huge things that these LLMs bring to the table and like the context that they can interpret and react based on that, yeah. it's huge. And it's really what's enables, enabling this new f kind of field in cybersecurity. I shouldn't forget to drink. <laughs> we have our we have a different type of sake now. So this one's from Kyoto mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. Again, also non-alcoholic. I'm All not right. sure uh, what the differences are, mm -hmm. but we're going to see if uh, we can tell. So yep. to the next one. Cheers. Cheers. Still good. No. Very similar. I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Hero was already thinking like I, I prefer the last one better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, look, it's the first episode. My sake palette isn't developed yet. Yeah. I can't tell the distinct notes between different sakes. All right, uh -huh. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, <laughs> I, okay, I want to flip. I want to flip it up right now because we talked about AI for defense, AI for like pen testing areas mm -hmm. like that. Wouldn't this also create the exact equal uh, effect on the opposite side? Mm -hmm. So, like, are we seeing, you know, there's a term, script kiddies. It's someone that's, like, not a sophisticated hacker, but is able to run, you know, bash commands from, from mm -hmm. Google or use hacking tools to get into access into stuff, a.k.a. me. Uh, <laughs> are, you know, are we seeing the next generation of script kiddies by able to use these kind of AI agents for evil? And what, what's that going to that dynamic kind of look like in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely like the, in general, like if, if these AI agents get like mass adoption and it's available for everyone, it's definitely going to bring a huge shift on how script kiddies, what they are capable of. Like they don't like imagine like as a script kiddie in the beginning, you can run a tool like Nmop and you're like, oh my God, I'm hacking. Yeah. Like, let alone the feeling of this system is hacking for me and doing the actual hacking. I think there will be a huge uprise in like the amount of hacks that will come up. Mm. Uh, but also like this will change, like if they have access to these kind of system, that means that all the companies can also have access to these kind of systems. So like, I think it will again be like this cat and mouse game that will keep on developing. Like, comp like this field might then make like that, like this catching up, but the defense will also catch up quick. Right. Like, I, I don't think, like, it will be huge imbalance for long. <laughs> you mentioned NMAP, right? Yeah. You described my first experience. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm yeah. a hacker. Where's my uh, hoodie? <laughs> I, <laughs> like, found, I found a port. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a port? <laughs> <laughs> port 80. How do I hack? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I have a game that I want to do today. It's called Would You Rather? And it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to give you two options and you're going to pick which of those options you would prefer to do. Now, we're going to refill our sake because uh, we need uh, motivation for this next game here. Perfect. <laughs> this is, just in case you're wondering, this is the same one as last time. <laughs> <laughs> in case you're curious. Busted. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you rather have all your credentials stored in a .env file in your Git repository Mm -hmm. or never be able to update your dependencies? Definitely the first. The first? The the, the end variables there, like, because, yeah, if, if, I, if I can't update my dependencies, then, yeah, if I have a web application running outside, then, yeah, I'm just fucked anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. I would, you know what? I would have thought, I would have thought environment variables, but I understand, but I understand, but mm -hmm. I understand it. 
it's yeah like as long as it's in a git repository there is like still a line of defense kind of yeah if sure. it's private but i mean that's but, number one if they, that's the first yeah. thing your 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 agentic models are going to be trying to do is yeah, yeah. is there exposed .git directory somewhere there but, exactly <laughs> like <laughs> yeah but like if i have to choose one okay yeah it's, sure. it's like definitely update your dependencies right, oh my god right. <laughs> would you rather have no mfa on mm. your internal infrastructure mm -hmm. or no firewall I think the no firewall again for the same reason as the end firewalls, because like you can't hack what you can't reach. If I wouldn't have a firewall and all my data would just be like all my ports would be open to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely no firewall. No firewall. All right. <laughs> no. Would you rather have no security scanning in your application or only be able to deploy to production, no staging environment? Ooh. I've got him. Yeah. I've got him on this one. The other ones were easy. The other ones were yeah. easy, but this one you're stumped on. Yeah, like I'm, I'm thinking like as a, yeah, I wouldn't want my production environment to be down, but I also don't want to be it to be vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I think, yeah, risk-wise, I would choose for like no staging. The, no like, staging and go yeah. security scanning. Like if, yeah, I, I, want, I would like security scanning, but like a good one. Right. If like if if it's like just a general low budget scanning it, then no, thank you. But like if I would have like proper scanning on there, I think I would take the risk of no staging. No. I feel like I feel like this is like the perfect segue to uh, no. talk about the sponsor of this, <laughs> of this, which is which is security scanning, which is better than than, than not having a staging environment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you so much for. Coming, coming on the show, drinking sake with me. I enjoyed yeah, it. Thank you. Zero percent sake, surprisingly good. It, surprisingly, surprisingly yeah. fire. You, you should get them as a sponsor next I should, time. I should get them as a sponsor <laughs> next time. I don't even know. I don't even. I don't even know what what, what one is called, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> but until next time, I'll see you yes. later. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed that episode today. We're trying to bring you high quality, engaging content here at The Disclosure Show. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us more than you know. And if you're feeling like it, also tell a friend about us. We'd really appreciate it. Well, I hope to see you on the next episode next week. And until then, have a great day and stay safe.